Hey, what's up? Inkaji from More My Tree here. I'm going to teach you guys how to make drums that are going to sound professional super quick. So I'm going to be working audio. So I'm going to type in kick over here. For this, I'm just going to go into my splice samples. You can go into all results or whatever works for you. I'm pulling this kick out, just dropping it in this channel. Boom. It's right there. Next, I'm going to type in snare. Find a snare I like. Cool. Drag and drop that in the channel right underneath. I'm going to put that on the point three. You could put that on the point two as well. Also, I'm going to make sure that these are not warped and drag to the beginning of each sample. Cool. I'm going to turn down this snare a little bit. Turn down this kick a little bit. There we go. All right, let's add some hi-hats on there quick. So I'm just typing hats. Look through my samples quick. There we go. I like that one. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to drag and drop it right there. Make sure it's not warped. Then I'm just going to duplicate this by going up here and clicking duplicate. Or you can hit Command D. Or Control D if you're on a Mac. I'm going to enlarge this right here. Well, bigger. Okay, and also uh, while we're making this, I'm going to get this loop bar. I'm going to drag it a little bit smaller so that way we can listen. We can also adjust the BPM up here. So let's say we want to go slower, like 130. Let's listen to that. 135 maybe. Mess around with the BPM until you like it. I'm on 136 and I like that. Cool. Okay, I'm going to keep it very simple here. So I got my kick, my snare, and my hi-hat. I'm going to name that real quick up here just by clicking up here and hitting rename or command or control R. You can hit tab and just go down to the next one without having to hit command R again. Cool. There we go. So they're all there. I'm going to group them by hitting command G and selecting all of them. And I'm just going to rename this group drums. So very simple. We're sounding good. We can maybe add like another kick in there or something if we really want to sweeten it up. Move it right there, maybe. Let's duplicate it two bars. Let's mess around with this a little bit. Maybe I'll move this right here. So the next step for making these sound really good is adding an effect on there so the effect i'm going to use is reverb for this type in reverb in your search and you can go to all results and you're going to see all your different options here if you have max for live i would suggest that reverb one of my favorites so you're just going to go to the convolution reverb pro you should have this if you have Ableton bot. I, I like to start this off with a snare first just to see how they sound. And one thing I like to do is I like to bust out this EQ right here and I just like to take out the lows first thing. As you can hear there is a bit too much on there so I'm going to take down the dry wet. Then I can also take down the decay. So it's your preferred sound. Sounds pretty good. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to duplicate this and put it on the hats and see what it sounds like. Maybe I'll turn it down a little bit or turn it up. Kind of like that. I'm going to turn down the volume and listen to it with the rest of the song. One thing you can do is you can click on your samples and change the detune over here just slightly. Doing this on every other one, just bringing it a couple points up and down is going to help make your hi-hat sound realistic, having different hits each time. If you want to take this even farther, you can go and maybe turn down the volume on a couple of them or turn it up slightly. Really just your preference to help bring out some little detail in your drums. You can even do the same thing to this snare over here detune it and maybe bring it up or down in volume a little bit. I'm going to bring down that decay on this snare. And last, you can uh, throw this on the kick as well. You just got to be careful to really cut off the lows when you put it on there. So let's make sure that these lows are really cut off and let's take a listen. Solo it. There you go. Let's see how it sounds all together. Cool, sounds good. The last thing I'm just going to do is I'm just going to mess with the detune on these samples just a little bit and the volume just a tiny bit as well. 
and that's going to be the last thing. Now that's going to help my drums sound a lot better, a lot cleaner. The last thing I'm going to do is throw an EQ8 in here. So I'm going to go and type in EQ8, all results, and drag and drop one over. So first I'm going to do this on my hi-hat. So I'm going to solo my hi-hats and look at this EQ. Pretty good. So what we're doing with this EQ is we're just taking out the sounds that we don't want in there. So let's say we only want these really high frequencies. What we're going to do is we're going to cut out all these low ones by getting a low frequency filter right here and just kind of scooping it up until we hear what we like. I like to go until I hear something I don't like and then slowly go back from there until I hear the sound that resonates with me. Cool. So that's me cutting off some of the lows for that. We can apply the same tactic to this snare right here. So here we go. I'm going to solo this snare and take a listen to it. Cool. Sounds good. One thing is with this kick, if we put this EQ on this kick as well, let's take a look at it. Solo this kick. See where it pops up. So what we're doing with this EQ is we're making space for all of our sounds to all have room in this EQ right here. So if we look at this kick, we can see that it's rooms right here. This is mostly where it's making its sound. And if we look at our snare, which is going to be a bit harder to detect where the sound's coming from, looks like about this area. So we can cut off this lower area over here to make room for a kick so it comes through more. So let's do that and see what it sounds like. So right now, I'm going to make sure I'm on my snare. I'm going to go over here and get a low cut. I'm just going to bring it up to here and see what it sounds like. Kind of like that. One other thing I might do is take out an area where the hi-hats were, just to make sure that the hi-hats will have room in there still. You can adjust this by making it wider or smaller. I like that. Okay, lastly, let's do this to our kick. So let's look at our kick. So one thing we can do is we can use this for, and instead of cutting things off, it just brings the volumes down. So let's bring the volumes down on our highs and see what it sounds like. Again, I like to go until I hear dissonance or something I don't like and try to get back to that sound that I like and make my adjusts that way. Listen to it normally. And I might take this and just take out that area where the snare was and see if that helps. All right, let's take a listen to our whole track and see how it sounds. Cool, it's sounding better. If we look at the EQ on all of the drums now, it should be a bit more balanced out than before. We can see all our separate parts coming in strongly and not blending together too much, each in their own frequency. This is going to help you control your sound as you go to add more things on there. If you're already controlling your EQ and your mixing, then your mixing overall is going to be way better if you're working on it while you're making the rest of your project. Going over what I did really quick, I was worked in audio and I just dragged samples into audio channels and then I went through and add a reverb on them. And then after that, I went through and EQ'd out things. Um, you can mess with where the placement of your EQ and your reverb is as well. So you can take your reverb, throw it all the way here, and make sure that it's after your EQs. This will help give your song a different effect. I hope this has helped out. Follow me for more videos.